What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender tool tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about the bevel tool, some different ways that you can use it, and also when you would use the bevel modifier as opposed to using the actual bevel tool inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So beveling is basically taking an edge and either rounding it off or making it a sloped edge. So for example, if I was to select this vertex, right here, and then activate the bevel tool, you can see how what this would do is this would take this edge and it would kind of flatten it off. So you can see how there's now a slope between the edge that we had selected and the rest of our object. And so beveling can do a lot of different things for you, including um, making things look more realistic. So that's probably one of the big things is we use the bevel tool a lot to make edges look a little bit more used and a little bit more like they would in real life instead of us having like a perfect corner, which isn't really a thing in real life. There's no such thing as a sharp corner that just comes to a point kind of like these um, continually when you look at things in real life. And so the way that you activate the bevel tool is by going into um, edit mode. So for example, let's say I wanted to bevel off the edge on this cube right here. Well, what I would do is I would just select the cube, tap the tab key, and that's going to put me inside of edit mode. And so within edit mode, there's a couple different ways that you can bevel things off. So you can activate the bevel tool by selecting an edge or multiple edges and hitting control B. And so when you hit control B, you can see how now when I move my mouse, this is going to bevel off this edge. So if I was to select multiple edges, so if I was to do a shift click and then do a control B again, you can see how this is going to now bevel these two edges off. So if I look at this, you can see how this bevels this edge right here, but not this edge right here. And so there's actually a couple different ways that this works depending on what you select. So you can do this by selecting edges, which is what you're going to do a lot of the time. So let's say, for example, I wanted to bevel these off. I would just do, I would make sure that I'm in edit mode. I would make sure I'm in edge select mode. And then I would type control B. And you can see how all of those different edges are going to get beveled off that I had selected. So you can do that. And notice that this will also bevel off your corner. So this bevel follows the corner of this object. Um, you can also do this by selecting faces. So if I was to go to face select mode and select this edge right here and type control B. Oh, and I am going to turn on my screencast keys. Sorry about that. So that you can actually see what I'm typing in the lower left hand corner. But you could also select this face and then do a control B and you can see how every edge along that face is going to get beveled. So if we look at this from a top down standpoint, you can see how this whole thing is going to get beveled if we have that face selected. So same thing with multiple faces. If I was to select all three of these, whoops, and do a control B, you can see how it's going to bevel off all of the edges connected with the faces that I had selected. So you could also do an A to tap to um, you could also tap A in order to select everything and then do a control B and that's going to bevel off all of the corners on your box. So you can see I can use this to bevel off my edges. So you can also do this with the vertices. So if you were to select like this vertex and this vertex and then do a bevel. This is going to bevel off the edge between those different vertices. So you can do this in vertex select mode as well. And so another thing you can do when you're beveling off objects, and we'll switch to this other cube right here, is when you have the bevel tool selected, so if I was to select this edge and do a control B, or let's select this edge for right now and do a control B, if you scroll your mouse wheel up with this tool selected, you can see how what this is going to do is this is going to add additional edges or vertices along the curve that it's creating. So you can see how I can scroll my mouse up and I can make a very smooth face or I can scroll my mouse down and I can add just a couple different edges in here. So with the bevel tool active, if you scroll up, that's going to add to the number of cuts that are created along this face, which is going to create a more smooth curve. So and we'll talk a little bit more about that one in a second. And so I actually do want to point out, usually you're going to select an edge and use the control B. But you can also select something like, uh, let's say we selected this edge, and you can activate the tool by clicking on this object right here. So if you click 
on the bevel tool, you can also click and drag this in and out. So notice that that's gonna work as well. And one thing to notice about that is when you do this, there's actually gonna be a little toolbar in the lower left-hand corner um, that allows you to select different options for your bevel. So for example, you can set this where it only bevels at your vertices. Um, you can also do some other things in here as well. And we're not gonna get too far into some of these. You can also adjust the number of segments over here. So you could type in a value. So like five and enter would give me five segments. But then one other thing that's really cool, I think a lot of people don't know is in here is there's actually a button for custom profile. And so what custom profile is going to do is that's actually going to let you select what your profile of your cut looks like. So if we look at this cut right here, for example, you can see how this gives me a little graph. Well, this little graph shows me the points of this curve. Well, if you watch, I can click and drag on each one of these points and this is going to follow the profile that I select in here. So if you want to create a different kind of beveled edge, you can use this custom profile function in order to do that. So you can see how this is kind of following along as we go. And you can also add points just by clicking in between objects. So you can see how, for example, if I wanted to add a point between this point and this point, I could just click on this line and then move that. So you can see how you can use this to create different custom profiles as well. And we're not gonna do a ton of that, but knowing that that's in there is always a good thing. And so this also works for multiple different faces. So let's say for example that I have this cylinder selected and I go into edit mode and we'll select either by doing an alt click or an alt shift click, we can select these two edge loops. We could also select the two faces, but we're gonna type in control B and notice that this is gonna allow us to bevel this. And notice that this kept this old, um, this custom profile. I'm gonna turn that back off and we're gonna do this again. So I'm just going to deselect everything, undo this and we'll do this again. So we've got our edge loop on the top and the bottom selected. We're gonna do a control B and I'm gonna move my mouse. And notice that by scrolling my mouse wheel up or down, I can adjust the different kinds of shapes that this is creating. So like for example, if I was to bring this way down like this and I was to add a bunch of edge loops, you can see how I get this kind of like curved cylinder in here. And not only does this give me um, a smoother face, it also gives me more geometry in here to work with if I decide that I wanna use this to edit my shape. So you can also use this to add geometry. So let's say for example, that I was to move in to this cylinder right here. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this along the Y axis and I'm gonna move this along the Y axis. But let's say that we were to go into edit mode and do a control R to add some loop cuts. So let's add some loop cuts in here just by scrolling our mouse up. And I'm gonna right click in order to set those. But you can come in here and I'm gonna do an Alt Shift click to select these edges right here, but you can use the bevel tool in order to add geometry along these lines. So these lines right now aren't on an edge, they're in the middle, but if I do a control B and I move my mouse, notice what this is gonna do is even within this object, um, along the inside here, this is basically splitting this up wherever those edges were using the bevel tool. And so what you can do is you can either scroll this up to create a bunch of different geometry in here, or you can just kind of leave it like this. But now you could take this geometry and you could just do an extrude. So you could tap E then S and you could constrain it by doing a shift Y. So these only extrude outward, but notice that you can now use the extrude tool in order to add ridges to this face. So you can also use the bevel tool in order to add that geometry in here. So if you did a control R to add a loop cut here, and then you did a control B to bevel this, you could split this up into some different geometry as well. So notice you can use the bevel tool not only to bevel off corners, but also to bevel off and create geometry along edges on faces. But now let's talk a little bit about when you would use the bevel modifier and when you would use the actual bevel tool in edit mode. So we're gonna add a cube right here and we'll do a shift right click in order to place our cursor right here. Then we'll do a shift A mesh cube and then we'll do a shift D to duplicate it. So what we've been doing up to this point is we've been selecting a cube 
hitting the tab key to go into edit mode, then doing a control B in order to bevel this. Notice you get all this extra geometry in here, and if you click, this is going to give you all of this that you can work with. However, you could also select this object and add a modifier. So you could go down to your modifiers tab, click on add modifier and you could click on bevel. You can see how this is going to do something very similar. So for example, this is gonna add numbers of segments. It's also gonna add offsets. So you can get a very similar look. However, the difference is if we were to now tab into edit mode, on this one, you're gonna see that your cube is still just a cube, right? So this is just in here as a cube. Well, what that means is that means you can't take any of this geometry and work with it, right? So if you were to try to select a face, you could get this whole face and you could extrude it that way. And notice that this is live updating with my new cube shape. But what you can't do is you can't come in here and actually select this geometry and work with it. So if I was to do a control R on this box, for example, you can see how this bevel modifier isn't really applying to that line, meaning that this isn't coming in here and giving me any of that extra geometry or anything like that. So if you're just looking to bevel something off quickly for visibility's sake, you can use the bevel modifier, but if you're actually looking to get this geometry that you can actually come in here and select and work with, like this, then you're gonna to wanna to use the bevel tool. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you have any tips working with the bevel tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.